Well hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're going to do a little bit more on the Atlas 7B Shaper so we're going to be making up a new motor mount bracket and for those of you who have been around for a little while watching this channel you will have seen what happened to the previous one when I stripped it down so that's broken in two and also there's a lot more cracks around this boss area I don't have the gear to fix that in the shop and it's going to be just as easy for me to make a new one so that's what we're going to do and if you want to see how I took the measurements for that go back and check out my video it was one in the workshop tips series called reverse engineering and you'll see how I took some dimensions of that and made a, a very rough sketch which is what we're going to be working from so as I said um, fabrication job so largely just some rough marking out of some steel cutting out using a bandsaw and whatever other means and methods that I'm going to need to use to get to rough shape and sizes stick it all together using a bit of weld a bit of final machining and then a bit of painting which I won't be doing in this episode but will be doing before we fit the thing back to the shaper and the final thing to mention is I'm going to be using some donated material from one of my subscribers so that's Terry thank you Terry you know who you are uh, that came this week. Um, I did order some material. It arrived. I got it all marked out. It's in here somewhere. I have not got a clue where it is. I cannot find it. So Terry kindly sent me another bit of 10mm material uh, through through the post which I've got and we're going to use that to make this bracket out of. So without any more babbling I will bring you in at my temporary bench as we're getting marked out uh, for the cutting out of the profiles on the bandsaw. Okay, we're still on my temporary bench because that's why. I'm not getting anything on there at the minute. It's still full of shaper and just mess. I need to have a thorough tidy up in here. Anyway, back on with the job. Here's my donor material from Terry. Terry Bloomfield. Thank you, Terry. Here's the existing broken bracket. And basically what we're going to do is... We're going to figure out some spacing on here and largely we're going to trace around these profiles or one of the profiles to get two of these wings out of it and then we'll measure and mark out for this parallel section somewhere out of it as well and then we'll set about cutting all of that out with the bandsaw. So first job is we're just going to get some blue on there so that I can see my markings a bit easier that will do for the first one right I'm going to find my scriber let that dry and I'll bring you back when we're marking out okay we've marked a bit more out on the blue we've got our super duper double sided drawing of what we're doing and we've got our first piece positioned and I'm literally just going to mark round into the blue with the scriber and I've obviously lined one edge up with the edge of the bar stock so there's no cutting to this so that will give us our first our first piece there we go that's our two parts I'm just going to double check that second one, can I do that? No, I can't. But it's the opposite hand. I measured them, they're both, they're both the same. In fact, I can do it like this. On the actual casting itself. Yeah. Pretty, uh, pretty uniform, those castings. So, using the same one for both templates is good enough. What I'm not doing is putting the hole in because we've got the measurements for that from my 
reverse engineering so we're going to put those in on the mill once we've done all of the fabrication because obviously these if I put them in now they're probably going to move with the expansion and contraction of the welding so I'm going to leave that till last once we've tidied everything up so I'll get this over to the bandsaw now and we'll get these two bits cut out so we've got our bandsaw set for vertical mode if you want to see that and you've not seen it go back and check out the video quite a way back where I built this vertical table but very sturdy and we're going to make a start on chopping these out There we go. So if you do the job like I said there, last thing you take out is the parts. You'll see some again, so there's tooth combing affair where I've got this bit of a radius. It's far easier to file the points of those teeth off than it is to file that whole area out. Very quick to do on the saw just to sort of dress that out with a saw like that. And largely that's it, there's just a bit of a corner to round off here. I've got a bit more to do on this one, just in this area. And that's largely those two cut out. So I'll get the next piece cut out of the stock, which is going to sit in between these two to make the bracket. Okay, time to do a bit of clean up and we're just going to address this radius that we grooved out like a comb with a nice new half round file. So here we go, let's just work into our scribe line that we've got on the part. So that's got both of those done, like that. There's the other one, all complete. So the rest of the clean up I'm just going to do on the belt sander. Just work into my scribe lines because they're all nice flat faces. So I'll bring you back when we've done that. Okay, we've got our two pieces finished, contoured all the way around, apart from this top edge and what I want to do is just dust over that with an end mill to make sure that they're both the same so nice and easy that's my saw cut face on both of them so I'm just going to use my inclinometer so we're going to put it on the vice top zero it out sit it on those saw cut faces and then just Go 
influence till we're at zero. Check out still aligned, which they are. And just give that a quick nip. And that's all set up. This thing has been one of the most useful tools in the workshop for stuff like this. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, I'll get a an end mill set up and we'll just dust these two faces off. Okay, that's got our three bits done, well prepped, where I'm going to weld and the mill scale taken off and you can see what we're creating there, so that's got us our basic shape. So we're going to move on now to this bit, which was where all the damage occurred around this top bit of casting where it's all cracked. So what we've got here is a bit of stock, it's off an old lathe tool shank that's, that was a brazed carbide tool that I raked out of a skip broken many years ago just for the stock, decent bit of material. So we're going to set that up now in the mill and make something that we're, loosely resembles that so that we can weld that into position as well. Okay, so there's our bit of stock, bit of work with the belt sander. I don't know how I ever went on without a belt sander. Just makes life doing this kind of job so easy. So there we go, there's all our bits now ready for fabrication. And you'll see that it looks very similar to the one behind it. And it's about in as many pieces. So the next job is to get the welding bench set up and tackle welding this together thinking hard about distortion and movement as I do it and trying to make a decent job of keeping it all as good as I can. Okay, it's weld up time. So we're going to go for, the, for this piece first. So we've got it clamped in position and this is where we hope I can get a half decent weld. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, for somebody like me, I'll take that as stuck together. Fairly pleased with that, not too shabby. So I've left the, the reason I've left the gap there at the front is because that's getting warm. When you look at the original part and I mark this out, you'll see where the gap is is where we've got to machine a, a relief into. So there was no point filling that up with weld that I needed to then machine back out. That is getting warm. Right, we'll get it set up to get the wings welded on and I'll bring you back. So I cut a, a spacer piece off the same length as the base deliberately for this particular task. It was going to be some of the leftover scrap so cut it at the same length which means I can clamp that between the two wings and now as I weld this back plate up which is going to have a tendency to want to kind of spring the leaves out hopefully that should hold it in place. Here's me talking like a proper welder that knows what he's doing. but passes the straight face test. So let's see what happens. Pretty good fit. Can't lift that up, but not the neatest welding in the world, which I didn't expect, but that's with a bit of clean up. I don't think that's going anywhere. And this is where we find out that I've welded it all back to front. Fortunately not. So there's the original with everything in the same place so we'll let that cool down we'll do a bit of clean up and I'll join you on the mill when we're machining the holes and the machine features on the back face happy days Okay, a few minutes of clean up with the end mill and that's us ready for putting the holes in. So didn't take too long, pretty pleased with that. That's come out quite nicely and I've got a nice flat machine face to bolt up to the back of the 
casting on the machine. I'm leaving my spacer in here just for now while I'm gripping in the vise because we're going to be gripping probably across this bit while we machine both sides. I'm not sure on this side what we do yet. We'll just grip on the edge. But we'll do the back side first, we'll put the holes in through here for clamping to the machine. OK, we're just going to put a slot in the back here, which is for the hex head bolt to make it captive. So we'll do that now, I'm, I'm all set up, I've got my DRO on, working to the numbers on my DRO, so we're just going to mill into here. Okay, so we've had to make a new a new bolt out of a different bolt. So we've run a 3 8 width with die all the way down. The head is smaller than the head in the old casting, but that's fine because we're making this slot to suit. So that's more than under the head size and it's a good it's a good fit in there to make that captive. So that's that feature done. We'll move on to the two slots for attaching to the machine. and so on okay so off camera we've put our second slot through I don't remember which one I filmed but we've put our second one through we've put our spot faces on similar to what the casting's got don't really need it on here but I've done it anyway so there's a nice spot face for the bolt head to sit on we've machined our clearance into this boss here for the bolt head to fit in in exactly the same way as the casting was so that is now looking very much like the original. So the last job now for me to do is to set up to put the cross hole through which is going to be a little bit challenging because I'm not sure whether I've got a drill long enough to go all the way through there. I do have a couple of long series drills, smaller diameter, we might have to do all the way through from one side and then pick up on the hole on the second side to finish it, something like that. So I'll bring you back in a moment when we've got a setup for putting the long hole through. Okay, here's the setup. So we're clamping our part in the vise up against the fixed jaw using a 123 block on the pad that we've welded on and we've got a spacer and a screw jack providing support to the top arm and what I've done is I've run a clock down this side and down the back and we're within two or three thou on both which for you know for what this is that's perfectly good enough so I've got my position I have put a scribe mark on just to double check we're somewhere in the parish so we're ready to go so we've got a long series drill which is just about long enough to get through the bottom but I'm going to need to probably drop the drill out the chuck a little bit I've got my mill head right on its maximum limit because of how high this part stood up
just So we've swapped it over, that long series drill was a 7mm diameter drill, we've got a 7mm diameter piece of drill rod in the chuck and we've set back up, that's just a nice, a nice fit in the hole. So I think that's going to be more than good enough for what this is. So, there we go, that's got our motor mount bracket complete, other than a final bit of clean up to get rid of the grease and a coat of paint. Now for what this is, I could have been far less pernickety really than I have been. There were lots of bits that I've done that I didn't need to do really, but this is a hobby at the end of the day and I've got the gear, I enjoy doing it, so therefore I wanted to make this as close to the original as I could but obviously it was never going to look exactly the same because that's a casting and this is a fabrication but I think I've done a fairly decent job of replicating the original there so with all of that being said I will now move to the board and we'll close this episode out. So there we go that gets us to the end of the motor mount bracket build. For the shaper so yeah as i said just now really pleased with that especially you know i'm not a welder i'm not a fabricator and i know i keep saying it and probably over critical of my own welding abilities at times because i'm don't think i'm very good if i'm honest but i'm pleased with that the way that's come out i've controlled distortion probably in welding for the first time ever and I think that's come out really well um, in terms of the distortion element at least with the welding so happy with that another piece of the shape of jigsaw puzzle complete I can tell you it's blooming warm in here today um, it's probably about 28 29 degrees which there'll be people around the world laughing at me for that but that is really really unusual for us up here so um, yeah very very sticky and warm but anyway job complete I hope you've enjoyed that and Thank you to the subscribers and the new subscribers and we'll catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making something else.